Hi guys, uh, welcome to the shed. Um, we're here because a little while ago, uh, Sarah Pantry posted up a uh, link into the BrewTube official Facebook group, uh, Facebook, Facebook group, saying that she wanted people to do uh, a grain to glass video. So I thought, yep, yeah, I'll jump on that. Um, let's get on there and see what I can do. So I brewed a blood orange vice beer. I've got loads and loads of footage. I think this is probably quite a long video, but loads of footage to show you with the brew day. I go through a load of my setup and everything. So sit back, have a look at the brew day. I'll edit it down as much as I can because I don't want to go on for too long, but uh, have a look at that and we'll be back when we're done with the, uh, the final beer. Now, so what we're brewing today, we are brewing a blood orange vice beer. 4.6%, 4.5%, something like that. Um, done this loads of times. This for me is probably the best effort to output ratio that you get. So the, the really, it's a very simple brew, but you, 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 the output, the uh, the product at the end of it, I think personally, is fantastic. Obviously you need to like what, a wheat beers. Um, I do all different iterations of this. This is a blood orange one. I've done apricot, I've done mango, uh, other ones I've done, the other ones, but it all just depends at the end, I'll tell you what does that, but um, it depends what you're putting it in. Uh, so, in here, last night, the grain bit, I ground up some of the grains. In there, there is uh, 2.7 kilos of pale wheat and 2.3 kilos of pilsner. So five kilos of total in um, in your grain. I've also, because there's a lot of wheat in this one, you tend to get a stuck sparge. So I've put in a load of rice holes in there as well, just to make sure that the, sp the, the water just keeps flowing and stuff like that. So, uh, so that's in there as well to help that along. There's only one hop drop in this whole process. Uh, Halatel Blanc, uh, 15 grams of Halatel Blanc, that's 8.1 percent alphas that gives me 13 a whopping 13 ibus and that's the only ibus in this beer so it's very very low bitterness um water's in here so it's just come up to temp that one there so that's my main boiler this one over here is my sparge boiler that's also at the temperature so it's just waiting ready so what i tend to do i go from the hot water tank i'll go into the mash tub so let's take the top lid off this I'll go into the mash tub and then I'll stir that around, get it to 66 degrees, uh, hopefully leave it half an hour. I then recirculate for another half an hour um, and again at 66, just so I have like an hour's sort of like mash and recirculation. Um, and then at, uh, after that I ramp it up to 77. And then I sp uh, yeah, sparge at 77, back into here. So this one empties out into here. Um, I sparge, so I recirculate through here. So in here is a coil. There's a coil inside there. So that's where I do my recirculation. It's also how I use my sparge, goes through that as well. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of that later on. And yeah, so uh, heat it up to 77, sparge at 77, sparge it back into this main boiler, boil it up, uh, add my hops, and then when that's ready, I'll just drain it out. And the fermenters are over there. It's a couple of grandfather fermenters, you can see. So I'll move from that into them at the end. And then fermentation, the other important bit in this recipe, is this is the guy that's doing most of the, uh, of the work in this here. So this is white yeast. It's got one of those activation packs. I've just smacked it. So hopefully it will start to expand. But it's the, uh, it's white yeast. Uh, 3068 Weinstefan uh, Weisen. Uh, yeah, that one. Okay. So, um, that's it. This one here is what really gives you your proper uh, vice beer. You know, so uh, having a good yeast is important for this beer. And I've used this one so many times before and it's fantastic. Love it. Right, so that one go there. Then, once done, obviously let fermentation do its thing. Uh, once it's all fermented and it's stopped, I add two of these. So this is what's giving you your 
flavor, whatever you want to call it. So it's going to be either, you know, a, a, a mango, uh, apricot, in this case, blood orange. So I've got two of these, they're two kilos each. Two kilos each, no, one kilo each, so one kilo each. So two kilos of these in total, so two of them. I just pour them straight into the fermenter. Once fermentation's done, I do exactly the same thing as I do in a dry hop. So I'll reduce down the temperature. So it will, I can never remember. I, I, I've done these loads of times before. I need to write in here so it stays in here, the fermentation temperature, I think it's 20 degrees. I have, have, have to have a look, I'll, I'll double check it. I'll Google it once I get my phone back. And I think it's 20 degrees. Just keep it at that stable while you're fermenting. Then before this goes in, I'll drop it down to 13 degrees and then pour these in. Why do I do that? Just because I do. I don't know if it makes a lot of difference as to when you're pouring these in or what, at what temperature it is, but reduce it down to 13 degrees and pour these in, two of them. Uh, then usually leave for about three or four days um, and then keg it up. So very, very simple. Um, but yeah, so as I say, I'm at the position now where I've just warmed this up. It is now, it's about 25 past 10 in the morning. I'm about to, uh, I've moved from here into the, uh, into the mash tun. So I'll just set up the hoses and I'll turn the pumps on and I'll show you how it's done. So you can't quite see it. If I move you over there slightly. So that, uh, you can go over there. Yeah, there you go. That, let me just push you up and down a bit like that. So you haven't got the, there's a lot of glasses underneath you here. There you go. How's that? Is that a bit better? Yeah, a bit better. Right, so this is my craft beer pipe system. So in here, behind there, there's a, there's like a, there's a box. Yeah, you can see it there. There you go. There's a box that's got, you know, a Raspberry Pi inside here and this tiny little screen. I had a bigger screen, but I couldn't get it to work. Um, so the screen I had was about sort of so big, um, would have been better, but I couldn't get it to work. So I had to put this older screen in there. Um, but inside there, are all the works, it's got uh, SSRs, it's got all the wiring and all that sort of thing. And basically I can control the boilers, the pumps and all that sort of thing through here. It, I can put a timer on it so it switches, so I can have everything ready. So last night I had everything ready to go. Cold water in here, cold water in the sparge boiler, and this just turns on at a certain time. So I just say, turn on at six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock, whenever I want, give it some time for them to both warm up. So when I come down here first thing, it's all ready for me to rock and roll. So in there, it's brilliant. I mean, when it, when it works, um, my last one died on me, so uh, I had to rebuild it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, great when they work, like most technology, I suppose. Um, really rambling on here. Uh, let me um, put this back up here so I know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to transfer into the mash tun. That's what we're going to do. So under here, I don't know if you can see, you can probably get it on pumps. There's two pumps down here. Both of them are pretty much the same. I had to replace one because it got it broke. So it's got a top pump and a bottom pump. Uh, so what I do is gravity feed from here down into the top of the pump. And then from there out into the mash tun. So it underlets, so it comes in underneath. So there's a pipe here, like a, um, a tap here. It will go in and it will push up sort of thing from the bottom. So let me grab my jug. So what I tend to do first is I just flush a bit of water through the pump to make sure it's been primed. Um, so open up this tap, open up the tap to the pump. So it will come through slowly first and then suddenly it will kick in, go wallop. Here we go. So now we have the pump nice and primed. So what I can do is now connect up this hose. So now we're all connected up. I just need to open this up. I don't tend to open this up full because I try to underlet a, a sort of like a slightly slower pace. Um, so it can come in and sort of like go slowly. So because it kind of, the whole point of underletting is you're trying to eliminate the dough balls. Um, I find if you do it really fast, it it will, it will just like, we'll still get dough balls in there. So if you do it fairly slow pace, it doesn't have to be that slow, 
um, it uh, it does it a little bit better. So we'll open up, and then what we'll do from the from the craft beer pipe, I'll turn the pump on to start pushing it through. So if I open this up, top pump. There we go. Now, if I had my phone in my hand, I could control the craft beer pie from the phone, so I don't have to reach over there and do it. So literally, I can be here, switch it on, and it will pump through. So. And I can see through here, so I've got my sight glass at the side of my um, boiler. I can see that the water's going down. If I turn this up here, it'll go down quicker. If I turn it down, it'll go down slower, obviously. Um, so yeah, so that's me just underletting, getting the water in. Got a little stool here, because I'm short ass. Sit up, stand on that. There's my uh, mash paddle. Give it a good stir, make sure you haven't got any dough balls and sit it there hopefully for 30 minutes. Let's see how we go. Right, you might hear that, the, that this has kicked on again. So what's happening in here, there's a temperature probe that the craft beer pie is measuring and I'm saying, well, keep that as steady. Once you get to a high temp, the temperature that I want it to be, so my strike temperature, it tends to be about 10 degrees more than the mash tun temp. So the mash tun I want 66 set this to 76 let's keep it at 76 so it's monitoring it so if this goes slightly below 76 it will kick on again and warm it up again so that's what the craft beer pie is doing so i tend to do this down to about 12 liters left right so i always put 10 liters more in here than i need to go into the mash tub when i get to 12 so what basically the, the end goal is 10 litres left in here and then it's all in there so I've got all the volume of water that I want in the mash tun. That 10 litres then ends up going back into my sparge boiler. So give this a Okay, so that's quite nice and smooth in there now. But what I do now, the reason for me doing this, so I've transferred, I've got 10, I've got two litres still to go from here into here. The reason I keep those two litres back, uh, I find my, uh, where is it called? Here it is. Oh, that. So I'll have a catering temperature probe. So just a, just a temperature probe thing, electric digital uh, thermometer. So I'm gonna pack that into the mash tun to see, is it at 66? Is it at 68? Is it at 60? What's it at? So I have to usually, with this, you have to check a few spots, few different spots. So if I go to the back, so that's saying 63 back there. That is going up 63, 64. So that's probably be around about right, 60, 64 and a half. Here, 64 and a half. Here, about 64. There, yeah, 62, 63, 64. So I've got 76 degrees still here in this. If I transfer that last two liters now into there, it should have get me to around about 65, which should be about 65, 66 where I want to be. The point of doing this was sometimes you overshoot it. So you'll be, let's say I was at 70. So instead of putting hot water in, I put a bit of cold water in straight from the tap. Um, but this time, and most times to be fair, it seems to be okay now. So I'll transfer the last two liters from here into here. <laughs> There we go. Right, so all done. So that's the last two litres going. So I've now got my, uh, what is it? 15 litres. 15 litres of water is now inside here. Let's give it another stir. Right, there we go. So there's no doubles there. I'm quite happy with it. What I'll do is I tend to put this into here. So I'll take the temperature probe, I'll put that into here, drop it in. put this lid on. Got that, there we go. So we're at about, yeah, about 65 degrees in there now. So, hey Siri, set timer, 30 minutes. 
30 minutes counting down. Right, 30 minutes will go. I'll come back in 30 minutes and I'll start recirculating it um, again at 66. So, uh, so yeah, happy with that. Keep that going, turn this off. All I need to do is the last 10 liters of water that's in here, I'm gonna transfer into the sparge boiler um, and then we wait 30 minutes. I'll be back when we're recirculating. I'll show you how it's all set up. I keep on looking over there. I should look over there. Always do this with this phone, but anyway, never mind. I'll be back in about 30 minutes or so and I'll show you how we recirculate. See you then. Right, so we're ready to start recirculating now. So what I do is inside the mash tun, there's like a, a, an inlet. I'll show, you, I'll show you it working in a sec. It's like an inlet thing. And I plug that into it. So what this is, this is some lock line equipment. It's just like these all click together. These all come individually, plastic sort of like tubes almost. And they sort of all click together to create this system. And each one of these red ones have a little sort of hole at the bottom of it and see. Uh, the blue clicks onto the other side. There's a blue outlet there. So we click in here, it goes through all the pipes that are down here, comes out and just put sparges through this and it comes out of the holes. I'll show you, I'll set it up. So I just need to, look, so this, there's the outlets in here, in the mash tun, click it on, push it down a bit. All right, so I will turn everything on. So my, my pipes are all, hoses rather, are all ready to rock and roll. So that should go through there. I should turn the top pump on and it's just not coming through. I'll take you off here and I'll show you on here how it is when it's coming through. And you can properly see how it all works. So as you can see, is the bottom of the mash tun. So it's coming out of the bottom into the top pump, up into the bottom of the sparge boiler. Let's take this lid off here so I can show you inside. And it goes inside the sparge boiler and then inside there you'll see there's a coil goes around and around that's the herms coil and it comes out of the top there through that pipe and into the mash tub where it comes out of the lock line system you see they're all flowing out there not all, it doesn't always come through all of the holes uh, it just depends on the flow so what i'm probably going to do because there's a lot of wheat in here i can turn this down so if i show you this look, if i turn it right down you come up here and you can see there you go look so you can control the flow of how fast that's coming through from that. So I'm going to turn it back up. There you go. And you see it's coming out through more holes now. As I say, it doesn't, it, sometimes it skips some of them. So that one there is sort of just dribbling through at the moment. But yeah, it's very effective and uh, a good way I find to sparge, uh, or to circulate as it is, and sparge later on. So uh, it's kind of spin you around now. Uh, yeah, so that's where you were. You were on top there. So you were in that. That's why you were bouncing. You were in front of all of our uh, spirits there and a uh, load of glasses. So you were looking at the top of that when I did it, the camera a little bit earlier. So uh, so that's the thing that fell off, this fucking thing. It basically lost its stick, fell off and uh, smashed the camera. So, uh, so you're up there now. Uh, okay, all right, all done. See you soon. Right, so here we are. Oops, I think that's, whoops. Okay. Nearly kicked the bucket. Um, so one of the fermenters, this has got a load of cleaning fluid in it at the moment. So this is like, it's a special cleaning fluid that comes with um, uh, the Grainfather. Grainfather cleaning fluid, it is, I think it's meant to be for both these and for their sort of all-in-one systems. So you need to get that out of here. So what I'll do, let's switch this on. So there's a tap just down here, you can switch on, and it will just start to pour out of this long tube here. And then every once in a while, just to flush it through, we've got two outlets. There's the bottom outlet, which is the normal sort of like what you would yeah, empty it from. And then there's this top outlet here, which is like the dumping valve. So you just pull this lever to the side, push it up, and it just dumps out of there. So it then comes out of the big one. There we go. There we go. So that's just emptying that tube out. Once that tube's empty, we'll stop. There we go. And then, so I'll carry on doing that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up again with some star sand. So I've got a lot of star sand over there. So I just fill this up with some star sand and uh, leave that sat there, um, making sure it's nicely um, sanitized. That's the word I've got before. So I'll probably plug it, plug it in as well. So down here we've got, this is the um, glycol chiller. 
so it just helps me maintain the temperatures in them and cold crash and all that sort of thing. So I'll connect it all up later and show you it working. So my alarm's just gone off. It's about to, you see the recirculate mash? So here is the craft beer pie. You can see it's about to finish the recirculate mash. So we've done sort of half an hour steeping, half an hour of recirculating. When that gets down to the final few seconds, what it'll do, it'll jump onto the next stage. You don't have to do, like wait for them to finish. You can just push the button there, that green button at the top, and it just skips to the next one. Um, if you want to do it, because like the timers aren't always set to be perfect in here. You can see the sparge boiler there, the 67.12, that's the current temperature reading. The green one underneath is what I set it to try and achieve. So it's sort of like monitoring around there and it will jump, there you go, bonk. Suddenly, see the green has gone up to 78. And you can possibly hear that the, uh, the boiler's kicked in fully. So this will start to go ramp up now. So 67.12 will go up and up and up start in a minute come on oh look at that look six seven eight no that's not right don't know what's happening there but anyway so essentially that is now kicking on properly so that temperature probe there tissue temperature probe there which is in there which goes back to here hopefully now no, it's still 67.06, don't know what's going on there, but anyway, so that, that will start to ramp up now, and uh, it should do, come on, temperature, oh, fuck it, okay, it does work, but uh, you have to believe me, maybe it will work a bit later, here you go, look, it's started going up now, come on, there you go, there you go, slowly but surely. We'll get to 78 and then we'll start uh, doing the uh, sparging. Right, so the recirculation's done now and we've mashed out. So we've got up to 70, 78 degrees. It did end up going up in the end. Um, so I've just got to change the hoses around and get ready to do the sparging. So in here, just, I'll just, uh, I won't take the show card because it's going to spin you around. But in here, I've got a hose. So, what I've got, I'll show you so this hose, I put this hose inside here. So, I've got an inlet here into the boiler, which has got a right angle in here, and I just click that hose to it so it goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank. Um, and Put that back on. Go the tank, so it just means that I can I can sparge and just slowly feed the water, feed the work into the bottom of here. So this is uh, turn turn all these taps off for a sec. All I need to do is connect from uh, move these buckets out of the way. Right, so. want to disconnect this hose and let that pour into there, into that out sec. And this hose goes back on. We connect from here up to here. And we connect from here. But first of all, we want this Oops. again. So I sparge with the water that's inside here. So uh, I connect that tap up to the bottom pump. Let's open this up. I'll just get rid of this for a sec. All right, I just need to give this jug a slush because it's got some uh, grain in it. Right, again, so priming the tap I mean the, uh, the pump rather, make sure it's coming through nicely, done. Right, so we're all tapped up and ready to go. Right, so the point is draining the wort out of here into here, but doing it very, very slowly. And also moving some, uh, some um, water from here into here so we're replenishing it and we're, we're rinsing the grain through here at 77 degrees right so it's barging 
Um, so that's all, that's all, we're all ready to go, but we do it slowly. So we drain this nice and slowly and we try to keep a level in here that's the same. So I usually pick a point in here, so I've got about 20 mark. So if I start to bring this in, so I've got like a sight, um, uh, not sight glass, a measurement guide on the back of the mash tun. So I look, I pick a, uh, a line and say, that's the level that I want to remain at. So I've got a line here, which is about 20, 20 liters. <coughs> and I can whip that up. So I just need to turn the bottom pump on. And water will start to come through and then I slow it right down with the, uh, with the ball valve. Right, so the same here for the top here, open up, open up, see it's come through, slow it right down to the top pump on, and we start to drain and come into here. So water's coming back into here, and the wort's coming out and going into here. So we have to do it nice and slowly. Then what I tend to do is I balance it. So I wanna make sure the water coming in is as quick as the water going out. So it's sort of like it keeps a level in here the same yep so that's just uh, do that just by sight really so that's why I pick a level one here and I say yep. and I say that's the level I want to get to the line the 20 line get it to there and just keep an eye on it that this is keeping on that 20 line If it's going too high, if it's going above the 20 line, obviously I've got too much water coming in too quickly. If it's going down, then I'm not putting enough. And I just change the, the level each time to make sure that the, the level stays the same. And that's sparging really. So, uh, oh yeah, and the temperature, keep the temperature at 77. So the craft beer pie makes, takes care of that. So you can hear that it's heating that up at the moment because it's not, it's saying it's, yeah, it's around about 77, but I keep that at 78 because when it goes through the pipes and everything, it loses that little bit of temperature. So the water coming through here should be at 77. So we're doing nicely, we're getting up to that 20 mark. So I just keep an eye on that. And that's sparging really, so there you go. I'll come back to you once I've collected the, uh, all the work. So we've collected just about 23 litres. I want to get to 29 litres is usually my aim that I usually go for. But when I get to about here, what I want to do is I want to take a bit of a sample and check that we're sort of like on where we where we on, on track for where we want to be as far as the, um, the gravity is concerned. So, so a few drops onto our refractometer, and what we're looking for, we want to have a pre-boil gravity of ten forty. That's what Brewfather tells me. So we're at, we're at 10.50 at the moment, and I've got a few litres to go. So we'll rapidly go down that. That 10.50 will go down to 10.40. Yeah, so that's fine. So I'm quite happy where we are to carry on. I'll check it again at about 27 litres, just to see that we're still not like going down too far or anything. I sometimes find with my efficiency, I am sometimes a little bit low on the pre-boil but i seem to make that up on the fire uh, the original gravity so we'll see just see where we get to but i'm happy with where we are at the moment right we have achieved boil so we're boiling away quite nicely in here i just need to keep an eye on it because i think it might boil over we're getting a bit of froth in there at the moment so you just need to keep an eye on that make sure it's not going to boil up too much um, but I've got here 15 grams of Halatau Blanc, which I'm going to chuck in there. Just want to make sure that we're not going to boil over. Uh, hmm. It's looking like we might do. Let me just take this, turn this, up, turn this down for a sec. Yeah, it's going, it's going up and up and up. So I'm going to turn it down for a sec. I'm going to chuck in 15 grams of Halatau Blanc in a minute. You don't need to see me do that. I'm just going to throw it in. But something else, to, just to show you that the yeast pack has really expanded. Look at that, There's properly loads of air in there. So that, that um, uh, what do you call it? The starter pack, the activator, that's it. The activator thing in there has really done that. So that'll be a good one, that, I think, uh, for the fermentation. Um, uh, yeah, that's, oh yeah, also it's, it's now 
uh, about, about nearly 20 to 20 to 2 so it's beer o'clock so there we go that's a, a hazy uh, american pale that i've got there all just citra in it that is so mm. lovely right so i've got to keep an eye on this make sure it doesn't boil over then i'm going to chuck these in and uh, then we'll carry on with the brew i'll uh, see you later so i just want to show you part of the process i've drained this now so that's now completely empty so i've taken all of the um it was the uh, sanitizer fluid out there and part of it's in here but part of it is up in here too so that was the sparge boiler or is the sparge boiler uh so it comes out goes through the bottom pump and i'm cleaning this basically so every time you use the uh the chiller the plate chiller we'll give it a sanitize so just stick it to go through there this uh this hose here as well this one is the one that i will use to put into the top there so i've got some bits and bobs sort of sanitizing down in there and this sanitizing the plate chiller so the boil is carrying on here we go this little bag that I use here, that I use up for the hops every time, um, just to hold them in so it doesn't go through the through the taps and things. So, yeah, happy days, all good. Just uh, waiting for the boil to finish, and then we'll uh, chill down. So this is the setup for, or my setup rather, the transfer to the fermenter. So the boiler boil's finished. We're in here. We go out of the from out of the boiler into the bottom into the top pump out of the top pump into the first side of the plate chiller out of the plate chiller up and into the top of the fermenter so there's the fermenter there ready it's all been sanitized and everything all ready to go the red the blue hose is cold water coming in the green hose is cold water well hot water you'll be going out and what happens so if you look here so that side is where my hoses are and you'll see the blue hose is connected to the cold tap. The green hose, you probably can't see. So we've got, here's the mash tun. So obviously that needs cleaning out. So the water first of all goes in there. I'll wait till that sort of fills up a bit. And then I transfer it onto here where I collect up the warm water, which I then use for um, clean up, basically. Uh, when it's finished, when that sort of gets filled up, I then put the uh, the green hose just straight down there, so it goes down to the uh, down into the uh, the drain. So we're all ready to rock and roll. I'll just turn it on, um, and then we can uh, we can start collecting into the fermenter. The most important thing is that tap is off. A number of times I've done it, and it starts pouring out of here. But the tap's off. We're ready to go, and uh, yeah, I'll start it all up. So right, so we've collected in the uh, the all the wort into the fermenter. I put on the fermenter a blast tube. I always use a blast tube. Just always do. Um, going into a jar of star sand. Um, I haven't sort of like fully clipped down the top yet, but I'm going to. It's up. It's sealed up pretty much. Okay. So it need, we need to get that down to 19. We're at 23.2. So we're just down here. We just turn on. Number fermenter number one the glycol this will pump round and start filling this up and this will start to come down a bit so that'd be good cool so we're in the fermenter yeast is pitched we're all doing we're all looking fantastic the pouch was absolutely almost exploding it was so so it expanded so much it was great so anyway there's the there's the uh the final sort of uh let's put it that way there's the final um, uh, trial jar, um, and we were looking for 1046 original gravity, tells me on brew father. This is much closer to 10, 1050, might be 1051, but I'm saying 10, I'm saying 1050, you, you won't be able to see that in that, but the blue line there, the blue line starts at 1040 to four, the blue line, there it starts at 10.44, and we're well below that. It's 10.50, it's 10.50, you have to have a word for it. Um, but this looks lovely and clear, it will ghost up with that yeast, uh, 100%. Um, it smells sugary. It's 
all right. It's like, you know, cold sugary tea, isn't it, basically? So, uh, yeah, happy with that. Um, very good brew day. Um, I'll Obviously, this is a Grant's glass, so you'll probably see, in, you'll probably see a bit at the beginning about me saying about the beer. I'll show you when I pitch the uh, pulp into the, uh, not the pulp, whatever it's called. What do they call it? Uh, puree, that's the one. So this is where I was looking for, I don't give it a P. Puree, I'll tell you when I'm pitching the puree into the fermenter, I'll video that and I'll show you um, just how I do it and what I do. But basically that is now sitting at 19 degrees and yeah, that's cool. We'll, uh, we'll be happy with that till fermentation finishes. I'll ramp it up, get it to probably about 21 or so. Uh, but just keep an eye on it. I mean, it is bubbling at the moment, but I think that's just getting rid of some excess air that was in there. So cool, brilliant, lovely. See you soon, and uh, yeah, see you when I'm putting the uh, the puree in. Bye. So we've finished with the fermentation. So it's all fermented out. It took about a week. So this is Sunday the was it twenty eighth. Yeah, Sunday the 28th of April. So it's been about a week. So I brewed it on the Saturday. This is the following Sunday. So the fermentation's done. It's been done for a little while actually. So, but I've just kept an eye on it and just let it sort of like, you know, rise the temperature up. So we started at 19. It's now sitting at 21. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going I'm to reduce the temperature down to about 13 degrees and I'm going to put the puree in there. Um, but this is the final uh, trial jar. You can see that how cloudy that's gone now, and that's just the yeast doing its job. There's nothing else in there. It's just purely the yeast that clouded it up. I knew it'd happen. It's a wheat beer, so uh, it's going to happen. Uh, so it's perfect. It's not a problem. Um, it's ended up at about 10, uh, 10, 14, I think it had. Oh, yeah, 10, 14. That's it. it were, 1014, yeah, 1014, sorry. Um, so working that out, I think that's about four, it's about four and a half percent, which is exactly where I wanted it to be. So really happy that it's ended up there. It sounds a bit high, but it, was, it, it started high and it's finished high. I think it predicted that it might finish at about 10, 11, uh, which would have given me about 5%, but four and a half is perfectly bang on for where I would have wanted to be for this beer. So as I said, what I'm gonna do, is now just I could do it through the app but you're up there so I'm just going to reduce the temperature here oops reduce it down so literally on the on the, uh, the, the little controller there you reduce it down to about 13 degrees the um, uh, what's the name the, the uh, glycol chiller kicks in and like does its job does its work so it will be about 13 degrees very very quickly so it's now it's 20 past three, so I'll just see how long it takes to do that. So, in the meantime, I tend to take this. Hope it won't roll away and uh, break. Put it into a little sort of small glass. Have a test of that sort of thing, so. really good so it obviously it needs carbonation it's, it's as flat as anything at the moment but uh, but really good it's a good base wheat beer vice beer you could drink that just like that without having the, the puree in there really delicious lovely so uh, but I tend to just to go this next level when I just put the puree in to, to, to change it up a little bit so uh, Happy with where that's gone. I'll be back in a sec when I'm putting the, the puree in. See you soon. Oh, they're lovely. <clears throat> so, right, so we're down at 13 degrees. It's been a while since I did it actually because in between me setting it, I had to go and pick the wife up. Uh, so it was a little bit of a longer than it was. So I didn't actually time how long it took to get down to 13. But it's sitting at 13 now. Um, I have need to put two of these in. So I've got two of these pouches of the uh, uh, orange, blood orange, blood orange puree. So two of these are gonna go in. So all you need to do is take the top off the mentor. <coughs> Excuse me. I usually just take the, uh, there's a little sort of like top on it here. That I'm gonna take off. So undo here. 
take the top off. Take this off. There's a little sort of covering thing inside here. Cover on it. You just have to peel that off. If you can. So this thing gets poured into here, and you have to do this carefully. It doesn't go everywhere. <clears throat> There's one. Just put that top one back on a sec. Right, that was harder than it should have been. These pouches, they come with like a seal around here. And that first one was absolutely fine, just peeled shut off. The second one just wouldn't come off. So anyway, I was glad I put the top back on because obviously as soon as you take that top off, you've got sort of like, you're exposing it to air. I mean, it's a tiny little bit, but it's off. But anyway, I'd put the top back on just while I was doing the second one and I'm quite glad I did. Anyway, so that's two litres of the few puree gone in there. So that will sit in there for, I don't know, three or four days or so. Then I'll cold, cr cold crush down and then keg as normal. I won't show that because that's uh, it's probably gone on for too long already, this video. Anyway, so um, I'll show you. I, will, I would already have shown you the beer on the other side. So we'll go back to me and I'll show it to you how it, how it came out. See you then. Bye. So that was a brew day. Very successful. Um, everything went well. Um, got the beer into the uh, into the fermenter and uh, yeah all happy days so let's just get the beer poured and then we'll show you the uh, the final product So there we go, absolutely a proper vice beer glass, which is always good, I think. Um, absolutely gorgeous color. I don't know what comes through there on the camera, but it's completely sort of orangey golden color, lovely white head. I don't know, the head doesn't hang around forever. I know that it's, I've, I've, you know, spoiler alert, I have had a couple of these before. Um, so uh beautiful color smell you just get loads and loads of that orange coming off this it's absolutely tons of the orange there's that real just that backbone of the the wheat that you can smell as well um that sort of like um it's quite distinctive uh, wheat smell the kind of sweet smell that's there definitely, sort of a general uh, wheat beer, vice beer, whatever. Let's get in for the taste. Hey, I've said it before when we did the, um, the brew video. This is, without a doubt, the best pay off to effort ratio it's such an easy brew it really is what you actually end up with is outstanding today 
is a shitty day. It's chucking it down out there. It's a bank holiday Monday, the, it's the 5th, 5th of May, and it's horrible. But if we had proper, um, uh, you know, barbecue weather, you'd knock back a few of these. Four and a half percent, I think it ended up at 4.7 actually, 4.7%. It's just delicious, and you can knock back loads of them. Amazing barbecue beer, amazing uh, lawnmower beer, whatever they want to call it. Uh, you have to like a wheat beer, admittedly. Um, some don't, you know, it's not everyone to everyone's taste, and I can totally understand that. And some people can't drink wheat beers as well, but. For me, that's an absolute winner. It's as close as I can get to um, making a, um, a sour beer. Um, and that's about as sour as I can take it. Um, but it's outstanding. It's absolutely delicious. So anyone, um, I'll put the link to the brew father recipe that I do down below. Um, if anyone wants to you know, try it out, please do. Those Leonce Blanc packets that I use, the puree, they're quite expensive, uh, and it makes it an expensive beer. But you, there's all different types you can use. You know, there's there's all different ones on the market. I tend to stick to that Leonce Blanc. It's ones I've always used in the past, and I, I just like to use them. But uh, it does make it fairly pricey. But but trust me, well worth it. So uh, cheers, guys. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed this going to glass, and hopefully, this is more of a, quite a few bit more footage coming up on the channel. So. Uh, Cheers to that, and uh, I'll see you again soon.